Well, guys, I can't hold my enthusiasm. I'm not going to wait to the end to tell you this. I got to say, I'm impressed for once with a Master Lock product. This is the Street Cuff, and this was sent to me by Lock Picking Lawyer. There's what your wrapper looks like. This is the model 8290 DPS. And I'll tell you, I looked this up on Amazon. Uh, there are some unscrupulous dealers out there, so be careful. If you decide to buy this, uh, it's priced anywhere from $46 all the way to $122. So pay close attention that you don't get ripped off. They rate this a 9 on their security scale of 10, and i got to say it's probably pretty close to that. It's, it really does provide a good level of security. And they are so confident... They give you a $3,500 guarantee for loss. Now, I did read through this. Uh, unlike lockpicking lawyer, I am not a lawyer, but I'm a little overwhelmed by all the stuff you have to provide them if your bike or motorcycle is stolen, but uh, they do offer it. It's intended to be used on the struts or on the for, uh, front shocks of motorcycles. You can see they locked it around a uh, security pole. Of course, it'll work on bicycles as well. Let's take a look at this thing. First of all, um, Everything on this is hardened steel. Um, it has a rubber buffer or little bumper on the cuff portion. If you intend to use this to try to lock up your little brother or something, you can forget it because that's, uh, unless he's got really big wrists, this thing will never work. It has one setting and it really is only designed to secure motorcycles or bicycles. So rubber here so you don't scar anything and of course all on the inside so you don't scratch any paint. This part is actually plastic, and you can pry that off with a screwdriver, and we'll do that later. I've already done it on, uh, on one side, just to take a look to see what was inside. When you look at the rest of this, first of all, this is completely articulated. So you can't kind of twist these around like you can some cuffs and get any leverage to twist this chain or to break it out of the cuff right here. Um, the chain itself looks like a very heavy-duty bicycle chain, except... They went to the trouble to put f fillers in here, little pieces of steel in between those joints. And they did that so that we can't put like a hydraulic uh, uh, ram in there or whatever to split these apart. All of these pins are hardened and of course they're, this is the original side and then they're all pinned on this side. Done very well, they're all pretty flexible. Uh, other side, exactly the same. And when we take a look at the lock, now I do see one... Uh, um, one master lock tendency is to cut some corners and while this is still a good lock I have to say there's something about it you need to know. First of all this is roughly the same diameter as a seven pin uh, tubular lock however when you look in there there are ten pins so they did squeeze extra pins in there but even though they have ten pins there's some fake pins like the one right here at the twelve o'clock position that's a fake one there's another one over here about the 4 o'clock position, fake pin, 6 o'clock fake pin, and 8 o'clock fake pin. So even though we have 10 pins visible, it's a little intimidating, only 6 of them have to be picked. So just be aware of that. It's still not an easy pick, I'll grant, it, grant you that. And it's very awkward in the field to try to pick it. And I'll, you'll understand that in just a minute. Standard tubular key. Now the interesting thing about this is... You have the tensioner on the outside and there's a gap and that's going to become important in a moment. And you notice inside all tubular keys have that lip on the inside. Well, master lock, to get around that, they just cut a groove in that center portion. The center part does not actually turn. That cutout is to accommodate the tensioner on the inside. So it doesn't actually do anything. The outside dimple is what actually t uh, tensions this lock. So when we slide it in, it goes in past that dimple of course compresses all the pins and then internally rotates and at that point you can't get the, the uh, key out. Then you can get rotated back and then this part has popped up and then it can open. Now this is interesting because there's only one locking position so if it's not there, if it's anywhere else you can't lock it. It has to be in that lock position in order for you to push that back down and then of course you got a lock. Well, that raises the question, can you shim it? And the answer I'm going to tell you right now is no, you can't. Uh, inside of there is the locking pawl, and when you lock this, which you can in the open position, you can't push that pawl down. So there's a positive mechanical block against that pawl to prevent shimming, and that's a great, great design, I think. I'm glad they did that, otherwise this thing would have been too easy to defeat. 
All right, I've given you all of the positives on this thing and all the negatives. Why don't I go ahead and clamp this up? You can see how difficult this will be to tension. If you're in the field and you have to pick this, it's going to be quite difficult. You're actually going to need a third hand or somebody to help you, like to hold on to it. In order to tension this, you can either make a homemade tension wrench to get underneath, because this outer lip, this outer lip doesn't turn, only the part beneath it. So you have to tension it underneath there. You can either fabricate a tensioner, which I've done before, or I'm going to take a probe and just put it into that angle and then push on the core on the inside. And that way I can kind of move it around to access all the pins that I need to pick. And then when I get, a pick, when I get it picked, it'll rotate around and then of course that will pop up telling us that we have an open. I'm going to have to clamp it up. I don't have a friend here to hold the lock for me and I don't have a third hand. So let me clamp it up and let's see if we can't get this thing picked. All right, this is a little bit awkward, but I think we can get it to work. Um, it's, it does work perfectly. I got the camera zoomed in so I can kind of pick around it. So it does work. So I was probably clamped. There we go. It does work. And now we're locked. All right, now uh, all you need to do to pick this thing is be patient, first of all. The trick is going to be tensioning it. So I'm going to slide this into the tensioner and then I'm just going to push it to the right. Now you see how there's a little bit of play in it? It may not be the best angle, but uh, let's try that. Now I'm going to push it to the right and then I'm just going to take a probe. This is a 15,000 broken pick that I just squared off on the end. Now notice this is a master lock, so there's a very wide gap on this side and a very thin gap on this side. That makes it a little bit, even with the 15 thousandths, to get access over here on this side. Now remember, I don't have to pick position number 3, 6, or 8. I've only got to pick 6 of these pins. So let's see if we can't do that. I'm just going to move from pin to pin just to feel if they're still springy. And so far they are. I'm going to change my tensioner. I might have that not quite positioned right. And continue to push it to the right. Now let's start around the circle again. As I said, the hardest part of this is to tension it. Even if you got a buddy holding the lock. If one of you slips, you're done. You're not going to be picking this lock. Okay, that was uh, that pin right there. Just got to click on him. There do not appear to be any security pins in these. You just have to be patient and go around finding the binder. Try not to overset. Just pick them one at a time. And that was that one. I got to click on him. Let's see if those guys pop back up. Nope. I think we got to click on that one. Then we got to click on that one. Those two are good. Let me go back and check one, see if he's done. Nope. So somebody's not right. I might have overset somebody. Just check and see if we got it. Nope. I'm going to reposition my hand there. Are we not focused? Come on. Okay, that one was set for sure. I think these two guys are set. So it's probably just somebody on this side. One of these three. I 
think we got to click on him again. Try to turn it. Nope. All right, let me go back and check those guys. Okay, we got an open now. Woo, man. Okay, now watch when I turn it. Again, you got to push with the probe. You can't tension it from the outside. You have to push it from the inside on that little ledge that they provide. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And then you can rotate it around if I get in there again. And as soon as you do that, you get a little pop. And now we are open. What a tough tough lock I got to tell you the the mechanism the locking mechanism itself is not really that complex it's just getting access to it and tensioning the darn thing because they used such a weird tensioning it's very very unique now what are we going to do with this thing I think it'd be interesting to take a close look I mean the lock picking lawyer he he sent me this and everybody knows lawyers have a lot of money so what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and pry this off and then that probably won't bother him if I do that. I'll, I'll do that off camera. I'm going to break this off. I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like. And then uh, we're going to start grinding from there and figure out if there is a weakness. I want to see what it is. And I also want to get a good idea of how that locking mechanism works. All right, let's take these covers off. All right, we don't need those anymore. All right, let's take a look at a couple of weaknesses here. Um, let's zoom in just a little bit. And here's what I like about this thing, first of all. Um, as I said, all hardened steel. They didn't uh, spare any rivets. These look like steel rivets. They are not aluminum. So they did a pretty good job there. So this plate is just not going to be easily pried off of there. It looks like he's just sitting in there but you can see it's clamped in pretty good. Um, I do see a couple of weaknesses right off the bat, potentials. First one, this was covered up. So when this guy was on here, you couldn't really see this joint. So what I'm thinking, compared to this huge bicycle looking hardened chain, this part looks pretty thin. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna take a die grinder and we're gonna cut right where I painted that red mark and I'm gonna count, I'm gonna measure how much time it takes to cut through. That's probably about the thinnest part. The other thing I'm gonna do, uh, maybe on the other side, is cut, now you notice that we have a wide part. This also is a wide part, so in the center is bound to be a thin shaft. What I'm gonna do is cut right here with a die grinder, cut right there with a die grinder to remove this piece and then maybe I can pop out this part. So that might take less time than cutting through this hardened link right here. So let's go ahead and do that and see how long that takes. All right, I didn't time it, but it feels like this was a little bit shorter time than cutting the section out. When you take a look at it, it went through there pretty quickly. Pretty, th This is definitely the thinnest part of the entire chain, so if you have to attack it uh, for a customer who's lost his key or something, it's probably about the best place to go. On the other side, I removed this small little chunk from right here and almost didn't cut it enough. Those rivets, I even cut through part of that one. It almost wasn't wide enough for me to get this out. So that's probably not a reliable way to do it. it uh, I don't know, it just seemed like it took longer that way as well. All right, enough with the physical. I think uh, even though it took uh, not so much time to cut through that link, it probably resisted more than most of the padlocks that we attacked um, early in an earlier video. I'll put a link to that uh, in the description. Next, I'd like to take a look at the locking mechanism. So I'm gonna take it and just grind off all of these. I'm gonna cut across the plate here and then remove this top plate so we can get an idea of how that locking mechanism works down here to prevent us from shimming this lock. 
Well, that took a, quite a while to get all those rivets ground off of there. And even the, once I got them ground off, they were still smashed and expanded in those holes. So I had to pry this off. And in the process, I ended up losing a spring that goes right here. But I think you can use your imagination on that part. So taking a quick look at this, these are the locking pawls. They're no longer under spring tension, so they can move around a little bit under there. Um, this is a solid locking bar, and then of course the lock itself. Just like we suspected, there's a reduced diameter on the chain to get it to fit into this slot, uh, but you're not gonna be able to access that thin part from outside. The thinnest part is the part that we cut through with a die grinder. Um, the lock itself, pretty interesting the way that this works. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it here, and you can see it'll, the locking paw will retract. And then once it does that, these can then, again, remember there's a spring right here. When you pull this out, it will compress those two locking blocks out of the way until it gets out, then it's going to push them back in place. So pretty cool design. Uh, you can lock it when it's in the open position, as we demonstrated, or when you push that back inside, it will compress them again. And then they'll push back out and then we can lock it. That is a positive block, this piece right here. You're not going to be able to shim it, no way to get at it. You can't even pop this lock off because, you probably have to unlock it again, I could just pop those locking paws out, but uh, in the side of this laminated steel, there's a roll pin located right there next to my fingertip, and the roll pin goes through these two pieces of lamination into the side of the lock. My thought was to try to find some way to pull this lock out. I thought it might just be in there under compression, but indeed that's secured with a hardened steel roll pin, not coming out of there. I gotta say, this is a very well designed lock, especially for $45. It's got that positive block that you really can't overcome with shimming. It's got plenty of hardened steel rivets. Everything on it was hardened steel to include the chain. They used the blocking. Whatever uh, master lock engineer design this master lock you guys need to give him a bonus and make sure he stays on your payroll to maybe help you out with some of your other products but insofar as this one i give this one very high marks which is really unusual for me with master lock products anyway lock picking lawyer dude i'm really sorry about all these pieces i'll try to box them up and you know what even though lawyers make a lot of money probably not a good idea to steal from them because they can sue you and i've had enough of that Lockpick and Lawyer, this is your lock. Still intact, undamaged. I used my $45 and chopped it up. <laughs> anyway, Lockpick and Lawyer, thank you for the lock, sir. Everybody else, stay safe, stay legal.